turning to our top story, the resignation of Liz Truss as British Prime Minister. Let's bring in Gillian Tett. She is the editorial board chair and editor at large for the U.S. Financial Times. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. So I guess great to be here. Yeah, let's let's talk about uh, what impact this resignation might have on the British economy and markets around the world. Well, there was a time when British politics and financial policy seemed to be really boring. Um, but these days, Britain's looking quite a lot like Italy um, in terms of the political dramas and um, financial uncertainty and market stress. I mean, sadly, without the good food and the cooking, though. Um, and essentially what this signals is that firstly, the British economy is very troubled, very troubled indeed, and that's going to last whatever happens next in terms of the leadership race. Um, secondly, that what you're really seeing in British politics is a battle between populists and what I call technocrats, people who don't try and rule in a populist way, but take sober, boring decisions. Um, and in the last few years, the populists have very much dominated. We saw that with Brexit. We saw that with Boris Johnson and Liz Truss. Um, essentially, though, we may now be seeing the tide turning and the technocrats, the boring leaders, coming back in charge. Jeremy Hunt, who is now the finance minister, the chancellor, is very much in that technocrat mold. He talks about, you know, spreadsheets and numbers and things like that. Um, and it's likely that whoever ends up replacing Liz Truss next, and there's going to be a leadership election inside the Conservative Party next week, um, whoever replaces her will probably be in the kind of more boring technocratic mold as well. Um, before I go on to my next question, I just want to read a brief statement from the President uh, of the United States reacting to this. The United States and the United Kingdom are strong allies and enduring friends. Uh, that fact will never change. I thank Prime Minister Liz Truss for her partnership on a range of issues, including holding Russia accountable for its war against Ukraine. Uh, we will continue our close cooperation with the UK government as we work together to meet the global challenge our nations face. So, I mean, not a, a, an expected sort of statement from uh, President Biden, who incidentally just the other week said that Liz Trust's um, economic plan was a mistake when he was asked. And so I ask you, was it just about this failed economic plan? Well, a lot of it was about the failed economic plan. And it wasn't just the details of the plan, which threatened to blow a $45 billion hole in the finances at a time when Britain is having to borrow a lot from overseas investors who worry about these kind of debt issues. It was also the way that the government delivered the plan and communicated it. They essentially sacked the person who was in charge of the finance ministry, the treasury, just before they actually put out that plan. That made people really nervous because, again, it's part of this war on experts, war on the technocrats, or the war that was happening on the technocrats and experts. Um, and then they basically announced this plan without the usual vetting. It's a bit like saying, we don't care what the CBO says or any of the other audit functions in government. Um, and it was full of these dramatic statements, but pretty short on detail. And when it came to communicating to people how this plan was going to work, they seemed to keep flip-flopping back and forth. So as I say, it was an awful lot of economic populism um, of the sort that, frankly, we've seen in America in recent years as well. But the reality is that a few years ago, financial investors and markets were willing to forgive a lot of populism. Now, with debt levels sky high, inflation rising, the economy slowing down, a lot of investors and financial market practitioners are saying, you know what, we actually want the numbers to add up. So that's a pretty sobering lesson for any leader in the Western world today. And it helps to explain why Joe Biden issued the statement that he did last week and why he's very busy trying to say it's business as usual. Uh, so, Gillian, who's running, uh, in the running, I should say, to be the next uh, British PM, and how soon will we know who it might possibly be? Well, the people whose names are being chucked around right now include Rishi Sunak, who lost out to Liz Truss in the initial leadership race. He's someone who's radically different from Liz Truss. He really is a safe pair of hands. He's somebody who knows all about making the numbers add up. 
who used to be chancellor, so he'd be seen as a pretty safe bet that would impress the financial markets, although he hasn't quite got the charisma of Liz Truss. There's also a woman called Peggy Mordaunt, who actually stepped in for Liz Truss in the um, House of Commons, the British Parliament, um, early this week when Liz Truss mysteriously failed to show up. And she did a terrific job, and she's regarded as many people as having a lot more flair and ability to connect with voters than Rishi Sunak. There are other names um, floating around as well. There's um, Zulie Braverman, who was forced to resign yesterday. Um, she's previously Home Secretary. Um, she's also somebody who may come into the race because she was previously seen as a champion of the far right. And there are people inside the Conservative Party who worry that the consequence of all of these dramas is that the British government is going to essentially rip up a lot of what it did with Brexit, get closer to Europe, and essentially become more centrist rather than right wing. So Braverman's seen as somebody who could actually potentially be still on the right. So quite a few names floating around. Um, and basically the decision gets taken next week when a vote is put to the Tory party membership. That in itself is hyper controversial because many people are saying, since we've had three different prime ministers in three months, this shouldn't just be in the hands of a tiny number of Tory party members. It's a bit like asking people in a primary race to vote on the president for the entire United States. You know, only 80,000 people voted for Liz Truss last time round inside the Conservative Party. So some people are saying, actually, what we really need right now in the UK is a general election. But turkeys don't vote for Christmas. Tory politicians are not going to push for that because they know that they will get wiped out if there is a general election. So we're likely to have just an internal party vote next week that hopefully will produce a leader that lasts more than 44 days. I was going to say, I bet you most of those people asking for a general election are members of the Labour Party <laughs> who have been sitting back. Well, they actually have been sitting back. They were quite boisterous yesterday during question period. But, you know, they have sort of the benefit of sitting back and watching the Labour Party kind of mow down their leadership. And it, and certainly, certainly as they campaign to become prime minister, they're going to be taking shots at each other. So the Labour Party gets to sit back and benefit from that. Which brings me to Keir Starmer. He is a leader of the Labour Party. What can you tell us about him? Well, he's somebody else who until very recently was seen as being unbelievably boring in the way he delivers his speeches and talks. Certainly compared to someone like um, Boris Johnson, who was, you know, a real um, orator, full of drama, really grabbed the camera and tended to hog the limelight. Keir Starmer really didn't stand a chance when he went head to head with um, Boris Johnson. But he's actually performed pretty well in the last few days. He's delivered some fantastic one liners and jokes. Mm -hmm. One of the things about the British Parliament is they have this thing called Prime Minister's Question Time, which is a kind of very dynamic, um, fast moving type of debate with a lot of comedic lines. And one of the things that Liz, that Keir Starmer may uh, memorably said is that um, when Liz Truss said the lady's not for turning, he said, well, the lady's not for turning up because she didn't appear in Parliament. Mm -hmm. um, so he's done pretty well in the last few days. Um, whether he's done well enough to really have the type of charisma to attract lots of new voters to Labour just on the basis of him is unclear. But right now, a lot of people are so fed up with the Conservative Party and these ridiculous dramas that, frankly, they don't go to Labour, almost whoever was leader of Labour. Interesting. Gillian Tett, thank you very much. Thank you.